Hello, Sisterhood. Welcome to another episode of Sisterhood of Limitless Living. Uh, today, we are speaking to Zakira Muhammad. She's going to share the experience that she's experienced with autoimmune um, issues, the whole challenges, and any inspiring messages that she's going to be sharing with us. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing them. So welcome, Zakira. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. So feel free to please introduce yourself to us. So yes, my name is Akira, and it is actually Arabic for the hereafter. I am a brand cultivating strategist and a professional photographer. I have been a professional photographer for nine years now, um, but I am also a cancer survivor. So I've survived uh, retinoblastoma, which is the cancer of the eye, for, oh, I've been in remission since I was nine months old. Um, but along with that, um, later on, a symptom, my doctor didn't say this would happen, but as I got older, another symptom became the autoimmune disease. So even though the cancer is okay, it's in remission, then came other side effects, which include polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I have been uh, officially, I was officially diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was 15 years old. So even though I got my menstrual cycle a little early, I think about 11 years old, I think, and then my mom started noticing differences in my body even as I was a young child. So uh, originally to maintain it, I was on birth control, you know, just to have regular periods. But um, then I wanted to go the holistic route. So I just started looking at how can I eat better? How can I maintain my schedule better? And so now, now I'm managing, you know, my polycystic ovarian syndrome. But hey, as a woman, it never really goes away. So. Yeah, every day is different. Every day is a journey. Some days are wonderful. Um, so feel free to please tell us about your autoimmune experience. Um, I didn't know that you are a cancer survivor. I commend you for everything that you've been through and gotten through. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and please share with us um, the more recent um, challenges of the autoimmune experience. Well, I think the most recently recent one is I've been married for about five years now. And so um, back when I was first diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, they did say I do have the possibility of not being able to have a child at all. So, um, of course, you know, back then I was 15 years old. I wasn't trying to have a child. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But of course, now that it's um, coming into fruition and now that it's closer to reality, um, infertility is the biggest issue. But nowadays, um, I think I'm just able to manage it um, now because I sometimes I will take medicine, sometimes I don't. I am one of those who are oh, not a pill popper. So if you ask me to take a pill, I'd be like, eh. <laughs> but um, other than that, I take, um, take, you know, I'm very in tune to my body. So if I know that, okay, I'm very tired, I should not be, you know, dancing today or I should try to get enough sleep, I probably am lacking um iron or um certain kind of veggies and i'm more in tune to my body now because i've had it for so long but of course there are days where stress will affect it more and um it's just a matter of picking like okay which factor is you know help it is affecting it today so yeah oh. and um how do you overcome those tough days where you know some days maybe there's exhaustion or pain um, how do you get through Family is important. Family and your support system is everything. Um, I would say some days I am a part of other uh, sisters, as we call it, C-Y-S-T-E-R. So group, Facebook group with other, um, those who also have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So sometimes we all happen to have the same days so we just kind of are a support system for each other. But other times it's just, you know, having my parents, you know, because obviously they're the ones who found a diagnosis, so they know they can even look at me and tell, okay, this is not one of your days. What do you need? <laughs> you know, so self-care is important. Um, so just being able to have that at least an hour, even if you are a busy woman, um, a busy person, just having that hour to yourself to do whatever it is you want to do. So for me, I love movies. I love music. I love traveling, but financially that depends on where I can go, whether I should just go or drive up the mountain because I live in Nashville, Tennessee, or, you know, just take a walk in the park. So sometimes it's just a matter of the simple things just to make sure that it, you can give yourself time. But it's not a whole self-care day, a self-care hour. Self-care hour. I love that. Um, so what types of advice would you give to somebody who is experiencing these symptoms of PCOS, PCOS or other autoimmune 
challenges, maybe there's, you know, fatigue, pain, any other things that maybe sometimes, some days they just feel like, I don't know if I want to do today. Uh, what advice would you give them? Well, definitely, if you don't have an official diagnosis yet, definitely go to your doctor and get a diagnosis. Because the thing about the thyroid is like this little thing right inside of our throat, and it really affects everything. Um, our, our glands, you know, really affect everything. So even though you are tired, it could be um, for one thing, even though you think it's something else. So definitely go to a um, doctor to get, try to get an official diagnosis. Because I will admit that we had to go to more than one doctor before we officially had the diagnosis. But in order to really just know what's going on, um, I mean, there's all kinds of doctors you have to go to, but OBGYN, endocrinologist, neurologist, whatever is necessary just to get the official diagnosis. But other than that, just continue to pay attention. Don't ignore, if you do feel tired, if you do feel something wrong, don't ignore it because it could be something that could lead to something else. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that you mentioned the whole care team. So it's not just one doctor, but it's this whole team of people that you need. Um, did you experience any challenges on the way to getting diagnosed? Did you experience any like misdiagnosis along the way or did it get, did you need a second opinion? How did it work? Um, I think, um, I think for us, it was more so of a second opinion, even though there was a sense, like my mom was always in tune. That's how she was the one who detected my cancer. So she just had that, you know, strong intuition. So she called it a visceral feeling, but, um, she just knew about the, uh, the moment that I first, I got my first menstrual cycle at 11 years old, and then there was nothing for like a year. So she was like, okay, let's get this checked out. So even though the first doctor just immediately said, oh, you just have a regular period that puts you on birth control, my mom was like, no, something else. So we ended up going to, because uh, that one, you know, didn't really do too many tests, but the other doctor actually did a blood test. And that's how they were able to pick up on the fact that I do have polycystic ovarian syndrome and a high level of testosterone. So everyone who had polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, it varied as far as, what you have because most people also who have polycystic ovarian syndrome are overweight i'm what they call a lean sister c-y-s-t-e-r so i'm like lean even though my metabolism is still bad which i'm grateful for because i don't have any kids yet but um definitely um just yeah making sure that you are first in tune with yourself because you know your body better than the doctors would be so yes I love that, being in tune with yourself, because we do know more. I mean, the doctors only know what they've seen, what they've seen about. Um, they, may, they may or may not experience it. Maybe sometimes you get a doctor who has a relative who had something, right? But, oh, had it themselves, yeah. Yeah, or themselves. Uh, so, yeah, we need to listen to within uh, to get that message. I really appreciate that you mentioned that. Um, so, um, is there anything else you would like to share about your experience? Any message you would like to give out there to people who are going through these struggles? Well, um, definitely also do your research. I mean, you may not be alone because there's so many groups out there of other women, other people who are literally going through it, especially if you are a, um, spouse, partner, close friend of someone, you know, definitely continue to do your research because what you think will help them may not be exactly what they need. So um, definitely, uh, if you want to be supportive, ask them. If you want to be supportive, be, go with them to the doctor appointments. Um, and then just, yeah, it's an everyday struggle, a never ending struggle. Unfortunately, not yet. There is not a cure for this. So all we have to do is just, you know, control it. You know, those are the things that we can try to control on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, definitely. I love that you mentioned that we have a sense of control over our lives and our health. And um, yeah, I think that's crucial. So um, how can people reach you? You mentioned uh, that you have, um, you're doing work as a brand strategist, you're a photographer. How can we learn more about the work that you're doing? Yes, well, everything has its own tab on my website, uh, zakiranayar.com. So my first name, in my middle name. So first name is Z-A-A-K-I-R-A-H. My middle name is Nayar, N as in Nancy, A-Y-Y-A-R. So you'll find out more about my photography, about my um, marketing and brand cultivating strategies, services, as well as podcasts. I've also recently um, launched a podcast and I had an episode where I kind of talked a little bit more about um, nutrition, like what I do on a day-to-day -day basis to take care of my acne, to 
um, eat healthy and things of that sort. Uh, and you can also find me on social media pretty much everywhere at Illuminate One, which is the meaning of my middle name. So I-L-L-U-M-I-N-O-U-S and one spelled out O-N-E. I love it. Thank you so much. I feel the light. I feel the energy and the positivity. And I'm really grateful for this opportunity to interview you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity as well. Thank you so much, Sakira. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you.